Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai guy here. How are we doing today? All right, today we're in um, my act, my wood shop, to do an unboxing. It's already unboxed, but it's kind of the first of probably a two or a three part review of this product. This product is a product that I actually have looked into a little while back, um, which is a power supply to power the tankless heaters that I installed from Renai. But it fell by the wayside and we, you know, we had the storm, we had the hurricane, and I had quite a bit of problems with uh, PC boards going, you know, from the power surges when they turned back on and, and people calling because their water servo valves were closed. So when the tankless water heater is dormant, you put the pipes to it, you turn it on, you're not going to get water out of the hot water side, and of course then your shower bodies aren't going to, if you want to use, take a cold shower, they can't because the tankless is not energized to open up the water servo valve. Like when we go to service these things, we actually have to flow water and then either unplug them, pull the disconnect, shut off the switch to keep the water servo valve open so that we can then run the vinegar through it. So I started looking into it, but then it just fell by the waist. And we were going around opening up people's water servo valves with a generator or running it off um, an inverter from the truck. Well, this company called Safeguard Power Solutions, or SPS, emailed me, a gentleman by the name of David. And when I looked at the product, I said, wait a minute. Went back into some notes that I had, and sure enough, it was the, the product. So I contacted the gentleman. And we spoke for quite some time on the phone, and they agreed to send me a product so I can do a review and a test and then the after on the channel. Well, I've had it now for about a week and a half and I have gone really heavily over it and I find now that I have it in physically in my hand and not just looking on a website, it is a very good product and we're going to go over it right now. We're going to open it. We're going to go over everything and look at it, and then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with it. So, the product comes two ways. It comes just the power supply. It comes the power supply with this water flow sensor. And then you can buy the water flow sensor separately. Now. Everything will be in the description below, so we're not going to waste time going over prices and going over model numbers. They sent me the Mac Daddy of um, their product. So, the product will come, of course, with a user's manual, and as you can see, it's called Yugo. It comes with a user's, user's, user's manual, which is um, it's a glossy very well put together manual. First page gives you a breakdown. Of course, the first pages are safety. First pages give you a breakdown of the front panel. Then it, how to mount it. We're going to go over the items. And then how to wire it. If you need to hardwire it, which we're going to go over in a minute. And then it gives you all of the technical information. So. When you order the product, you're going to get Mr. Yugo, which is a heavy powder coated case that is water resistant. It can be put on the outside of a house for an exterior tankless and not have to worry when you take a look at the gaskets, which are very well designed and very heavy. So the product is water resistant, so you're not submerging it on the water, but you can use it outside for an exterior tankless, which pretty much 85% of all my tanklesses that I go service, 
uh, most, most of them I install are interior, so it worked perfect. It comes with, now of course, this is the Mac Daddy, the water uh, flow sensor, the plug to plug in the water flow sensor. It comes with four mounting brackets. Eight stainless steel screws. And this key. So, the product is, I can tell you right now, it's heavy. The product weighs 48.5 pounds, is 14 inches by 9 inches by 12 inches. So we have 14 by 12 by 9. It is a model number Yugo-X1. Inside of the unit, there is, it's a lift and turn, so when it's down, that's how you open it. You can kind of like pick it up a little bit and turn it. The key is a triangular key, very heavy lock. Zoom in. Okay, we're going to get a pointer. Very heavy gasket, ground for the door. It comes without it plugged in for battery power. So once you plug this in, we're going to go to the side for the cord. 24 hour charging time and it'll sit in standby mode and we're going to go into that in a second this is a shipping bracket that holds the battery in and the battery is a 36 amp hour non-spill liquid battery if you want to purchase one from another manufacturer separately because they do not sell it you can it's rated for a 50 amp hour battery the device puts out 300 and 50 watts of power. Uh, an average tankless is around 240 or so. So there's plenty of power to power up even the largest RUR unit. It will give you between 5 and 13 hours of runtime. With the water flow sensor, when this is put into the cold water, directional, it has three quarter inch male hose threads on it, wired back to the unit. The unit is dormant until you run water through the tankless. Then it powers up the unit. You take a five minute shower, you shut the water off, the flow sensor senses no more water, it puts it back into kind of like a standby mode. So it, it gives you a longer runtime with the battery backup. And just say, if you took, you had a family of four and each of them took, it was an hour a day during power outage. You can almost get seven days out of this unit. So there is your on off switch. LED, your dry contacts, power, but this unit can be put in, it's a, it's a plug and play. So basically we're going to plug in the battery, and probably is a little bit of a charge in here, yep. I'm going to just shut it off for now. Alright, as you can see, very heavy gaskets are out. Indi window to look at the indicator light. Now let's just make sure we're still into. We're still in. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, let's just lock the door so we're not moving around. 
Okay, now, let's remove the side panel to get to the actual bread and butter. The unit runs off of, you know, a 115 volt outlet. Let's just get these four screws off. Now this is how it, I've already had the, the cord out, been playing with it, but this is how it comes with the cord wrapped inside of the housing. All right, look at that gasket. How thick it is. Now that gasket and this plate is what's protecting what you're plugging in. So you have your power cord which is, let's measure it out. I know they give it to you, but it's always good to measure it out. Looks like it's six feet. Yep, six foot cord. All right, <clears throat> then there's your plug, your 115 volt plug right here. You see it? Then there's a uh, opening here for auxiliary. And then here is the plug for the water flow sensor, which is right here. And the plug has lockdown screws so that once you wire the water flow sensor into here, you can you lock it down in the device. So everything comes out of the bottom of this plate. So you have your power cord, you'll have your power cord from the tankless, and let's, just, let's actually, here, let's simulate that. Let's just say this is your tankless heater. There's your tankless heater, there's your power cord, because, you know, this water flow sensor, is not, the wire is very small. So there is your, and the gasket goes around and grabs the cord. So this would get plugged into your outlet. This would get plugged into your outlet, and that is simulating your tankless heater. Put your screws in, it tightens up the gasket, now it makes it water resistant. So now, the unit, let's get back to the side of here so I don't trip on it, and let's get this thing zoomed back out. All right, so now, if you have an interior tankless heater, you put your wall mount brackets on, you can mount it right to the wall plug this into your outlet because remember on your interior tankless heaters they come with a plug. Your exterior have to be hardwired. Now there is a way that you can hardwire the tankless into here but I would suggest to and like I have outside in mind have a licensed electrician put an outlet in. Turn to disconnect it's 115 volts, 120 volts. Put an outlet in with an in-use cover. Plug your tankless in. Put a whip on it. And now you can take this, mount it to the side of your house. Plug in your tankless. Plug this into your in-use cover. Put your plate back on. And now you're into battery backup. Now, the thing's going to just sit charged and sit dormant until 
the um, power goes out. Now, let's go over a little bit of the technical information here. And I'll tell you about the battery backup that we have used um, when we first started around 11 years ago. And we had a lot of customers that had the battery backup. We actually had five put in. And it just became a nightmare. They were frying the PC boards. They were even causing the fans to malfunction. And um, they, no more, that's it. We, they pulled out and I never even looked at, and when people would ask for battery backup, I said, no, 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 you can't do it. Taboo, exorcist, no good. <clears throat> All right, the reason that this one, and it is being um, looked at, the reason that this one will work very well is because this unit uses what they call pure sine waves. Pure sine waves, and I, I, I'm not an a, a electrical engineer, and we actually went out last night with dinner with my uncle for his birthday, uh, my wife and I and, and my aunt and uncle, and he's an engineer by trade, and I showed him photos of this. Um, pretty much, you know, if you want to do it in your house, because we have a Renai in his house, and um, we went through this thing, and when I mentioned the sine waves, he started throwing all kinds of stuff at me. I'm like, hey, you want to come and, on the video and explain this? But not to, I, I, I kind of read up on it, and basically it's what, that, what is sent in by the utility companies. And mostly all appliances, all stuff manufactured, uh, wants this pure sine wave, and this unit puts it out. And it's some of the high-end generators do it. So this unit is good for uh, not just tanklesses. This thing you can put it on wheels and bring it to a campsite and, and use it to power lights or charge your phone or whatever. So it's not just for tankless. You could use it for anything. You could power anything up with this thing. <clears throat> now, the, um, the unit, again, um, is rated at 350 watts. It has that um, 30, what was that, the 30, uh, my mind is going, 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 going. I mean, I don't want to open, I'm going to open it up again and read it, sorry. Thirty-six amp power. So a thirty-six amp hour battery, you can put a fifty, and they do not sell it. Um, it's sold separately. Um, the unit, once power is down, will will activate, but with the water flow sensor, it will stay dormant until you start flowing water. Without the water flow sensor, the, the unit will power the tankless and you'll get about four to five hours out of it roughly. Um, you know, there is variables in it, but the other really amazing thing about this is that on tankless heaters, especially Renai's, you know, I'm from Florida, so we really, we get cold, it does freeze, but not like where I came from up in New York where, you know, we had thawing machines to thaw out pipes. Well, on a tankless heater, there's freeze protection. And when you, if you have opened up a tankless heater, especially in an external one, and see the, at the center bottom, there's a group of wires that have no, thing, no connections, they're clipped together, they have white tabs on them, and there's, if you're going to um, use the MC cable, or if you're going to use the Pack A and Pack B, so that you have multiple ones, and then um, some of them have pump controller, well, one of them says freeze protection. Well, this device has a sensor, a temperature sensor in it that will sense at 37 degrees, will power up the ceramic resistors inside of the tankless heater. Now, those ceramic resistors are positioned at the factory around the tankless heater. And for those of you that are familiar <clears throat> with servicing the tankless heaters, and especially swapping out heat exchangers, you know 
what a pain in the neck it is to um, remove the resistors um, and the freeze protection. Well, this unit will power up those ceramic resistors and start heating up the heat exchanger so that you don't get a freeze up and the heat exchanger cracks. Now, if just say, most likely this is for someone that is like a snowbird and leave, say, New York to come to Florida and has a tankless heater in their house, they now can not worry that the unit is going to um, freeze. Now, they also make that device where it actually opens up a valve and drains the tankless out of water. You don't need any of that because you're going to have power powering those ceramic resistors. Now, if, say, you live in this house, and it's the middle of the night, drops down, it freezes, it senses it, it starts heating it up, there was a concern that the wattage that the tankless uses and the wattage that the freeze protection uses was over the rating of 350 watts of this unit. Well, to let you know that if the freeze protection activates and there's people home and they wake up to take an early shower and as soon as they get into the uh, shower and flow water or whatever, flow water in the house, the freeze protection shuts down because the tankless is firing and for those of you know, running water doesn't freeze. It's only water that's sitting alone, sitting doing nothing. So it shuts the freeze protection down, fires the tankless up, and now the tankless and the heat exchanger and the burner and the burner chamber and the fan and everything else in there is getting warm. And the tankless will then do its thing. They shut off. It senses the cold temperature it'll turn the ceramic resistors back on because it's not firing. As long as the tankless is firing, so the ceramic resistors use about 100 and, well, we're just gonna round it off, just say roughly around 140, 150. So we're, they're very close to what the main capacity of the unit is and, and they, were, they were afraid, but um, I knew that that's the way it worked, but I did, we did call engineering up and yes, they told us that's how it works. So. There, there, there would be no problem with it. So, this this will work perfectly for a, the tankless here. So now, what I'm gonna do, let's just make sure we went through everything. As I mentioned, it's 48.5 pounds. Um, they're out of California. Um, very, very, very good two gentlemen that I've dealt with. Um, they're very knowledgeable, um, very friendly, um, had very very good and long conversations with them about the product um, I feel the product especially manufacturing a quality price durability and what it can do it's well worth the money um, let's just go in and just see I'm not going to start going into real technical stuff uh, all right so what I'm going to do to test this product is I'm going to take this and I'm going to build a little platform put a back on it mount it to it we're going to put it outside right next to my tankless heater now I had a brand new electrical service put in for the wood shop and for the house and I had a ton of extra breakers put in and I had everything separated and one of the things I have separated is my tankless heater. And I, when I installed my new um, RL75EP, um, I moved my controller from when it was behind the refrigerator, because I left, always left it at 115 and I never touched it. Now it's in my laundry room. So what we're gonna do is we're going to bring this and put it out under my tankless heater. And we're going to 
plug it in, power it up, and then I'm going to simulate power outage by shutting off the breaker while, to say, my son or my wife is in the shower or not in the shower. We can look at the controller with the red light to see that we lost power, we lost um, actual, the, 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 the number 120, and then we can see when we shut off the breaker, power goes out, and then how fast the power will turn on for the, um, the tankless. We're gonna do it with the water servo valve, and we're gonna do it without the water servo valve. And we'll simulate the power outage back and forth. Sink, um, shower. You know, you, you got a storm, you got a hurricane. For starters, you're not really gonna be in the shower if you're gonna take a shower. And a lot of people really don't like them going showers when you know there's a storm out there, thunder and lightning. They fear they're gonna get electric, uh, you know, they're gonna get lightning strike in the shower. Uh, people told me that, but. People, you know, after a day or two would like a shower, especially if they're prolonged. And when they're gonna take a shower, they're really gonna be in and out. You know, yes, yeah, so you got a woman or a guy, you know, whatever. They got long hair, they gotta do the shower. So they're gonna be in there, say, five, even 10 minutes. So two people in the house, that's 20 minutes. So you're gonna get quite a few days out of this, this power to power up the tankless seat. So, um, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, again, it's Safeguard Power Solutions. It's called Yugo. The If you go on their uh, website, um, you can see the product um, is sold with just the um, Yugo. Then you can buy the water flow servo valve separate, which comes with the water flow servo valve and the plug. Then you can buy the unit with the Yugo and the water flow servo valve. You're going to get the uh, wall mount brackets with the uh, eight screws. And of course, everything else you see here. There is an alarm that'll tell you if the battery is low. Again, it's gonna take 24 hours of charge up time. And uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to charge the unit up right now as we speak. I love this kid. I mean, I, I raved to him when I talked to the guy Dave on the phone. I raved about the kid. I, I just like when they design something that is is heavy duty. So let's turn it on. Battery low. Yep. Yep. We got the battery low. Signal flashing, power on, battery low signal flashing. Let me see something a second. Got a very loud alarm. give you an open close on the uh, on the box all righty all right we're gonna, I'm gonna build my little platform get it all charged up and uh, then I'll do another um, video on what it looks like outside plugged in how I kind of foresee myself installing these because like I said, a lot of the houses that I go either to do a service um, after it's built, they're brand new, they're all, all exterior tankless heaters. The ones that I install in my immediate area, I pull the tank out from the garage and I put that tankless on the wall. Or even if it's a propane fired unit. So um, that's, you know, be perfect mount it right on the wall and I'll take a you know say a three quarter inch piece of plywood two studs nice and level nice and square screw it to it 
put my brackets on, lift it up, get it nice and level. Oh, they even give you, this is even cool. Let me get to this page. Here we are. They give you the measurements if you're going to pre-drill holes for the uh, mounting brackets on page 17. That's pretty cool. And when I was going through this, I'm like, damn, this, they didn't forget about anything in here. I have troubleshooting. They do tell you if you're going to hardwire, and it's heavily suggested that you get a licensed electrician to do that. Because as you can see, it actually starts on page 19. There we go. Yes, 19, number 8. Hardwiring instructions. And it actually says, um, if your application does not have a plug and requires hardwiring, it is a strong, it is strong recommended that the following um, procedures be completed by a certified electrician. And the installer must follow all codes and to assure safety of the installation and operation. Okay, improper installation voids the warranty for the Yugo product. So it starts on page 19, oh, excuse me, 9, uh, 8, and then moves over to page 10, and then you have, um, and then it goes, yes, and stops at page 10, and then it goes up to a page 11, and then you got storage and transportation, maintenance and troubleshooting, troubleshooting, and then you got your output. And then your first page, of course, is your front panel. You got your LED display um, explanation. Then your installation. They even tell you where the, you know, the screws, pretty much self-explanatory. Then your hole pattern. Mounting. And then even gives you a photo of your, your utility output socket, uh, your reserved outlet um, hole, and then your power cord. And then, of course, the water flow sensor port. And again, that's really cool that this thing has these little, you know, you need a very small flat screwdriver, but it's, you know, it's like the computer when it locks into the back and it's those push in. So you just push in the wires. And then you, you would put a little screwdriver in there, push down the piece to pop it out if you had to pop it out. But very nice. Very nice. See, they thought of really almost everything on this product. Um, and I can tell you this, and I'm not mentioning names. Um, for those of you that have been in the trade for a while, you pretty much know who I'm talking about. Um, it, that it wasn't, uh, you know, for the price that we paid, and I'll tell you right now, that was, that was uh, a quarter more of what this product was. Um, it wasn't built like this. You know, I don't really know, know the battery. I just, we just bought it, we put it in. Um, we've even, people even bought ones like big computer ones and put them in themselves. And then we get a call for completely dead tankless and then we get there and you know, there's the old battery backup bought from say, you know, um, Staples or whatever. and. It was, it was just, it was a debacle. And we got a bad, a lot of us got a bad taste in our mouth. But I've showed this actually to the reps. I've showed this to other uh, plumbers that I know that installed just tankless heaters. If they wanted to, um, uh, you know, upsell a product to a customer. I haven't, um, uh, one of my, uh, one gentleman that I have helped, um, I've sent him information. He's very interested in it. And he'll buy it, you know, uh, just because he goes back and forth. But um, I need to talk to him a little more about it. Uh, but I haven't, um, you know, given this or sent this out to any of my customers, especially the ones that I remember were um, frantic when they had no, um, when they had no power. And some of them, you know, the indoor ones, they were gonna just unplug, start up a small generator, and plug in 
because they watched us do it. You know, we uh, if you looked at my video on you know how to power up from a generator or a car, your tank will heat it just to get the water servo valve open. You got to start up the generator first, let it run for a while, you know, for a couple of minutes just so that it cycles up. Then plug your tankless in. If you plug your tankless in, you start up your generator, it could surge into the PC board, fry the PC board, and then you'll poop out of luck. So, and a couple of the customers back with the hurricane, yes, that's the way they did it. So, you know, there was like 38, 37 PC boards we ended up replacing. Um, so, all right, that's that. Again, everything will be in the description below. And um, I'm going to make this thing, make this uh, stand, get it, get it situated. We'll mount it outside. We'll do a video on that. And then um, I'll uh, let it run for, you know, at least 30 days of simulating. And we'll do a third part review on it. All right. Okay. Um... I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have um, a question, technical question, um, just shoot me an email or shoot me a comment. But again, my email is below. Shoot me an email. I'll uh, email you back. Uh, if I can't answer it through an email, most of the time, I'll just send you my phone number and we'll go over it. Um, for everyone, thank you again for all of your likes, all of your subscribes, all your comments, all your questions. I greatly appreciate it. And um, I'll see you on the next video. Okay? You'll be safe out there and have a good weekend. Bye-bye.